Today we are here at the Wentworth Club with a very special guest, six-time major winner, former world number one, and one of our golfing heroes, Sir Nick Faldo, and he's going to be sharing three must-dos to help you with your iron. Absolutely. Now, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure you do and hit the notification bell so you don't miss another video. And if you want to knock five shots off your score, click the link in the description. Super excited. There we go. Six shots. Six, six shots. shots. Six shots now. After today. <laughs> six After today. today. <laughs> okay. You get extra. Yes. So, Nick. Hello, guys. Great having you. It's uh, Hello. a big privilege of ours to actually, you know, meet you for the first time and actually do a video as well. You okay? I'm, I'm more than okay. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, what we want to do, we know you know, your iron play has been supreme in your tournaments years. We'd love to know why it was so good, but okay. also we want to... Yeah. A few secrets. A few secrets, that's a selfish secrets one for me and Andy, okay. for sure. Yeah. But we want to see if we've got three tips that amateur golfers may yeah, 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 sure. be no, helped no. with as well. So, well, yeah. you know, <laughs> number one, number one, you know, when I used to play the pro-ams and, and somebody would hit it straight in the trees and I would say, good shot, and the guy's like... <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, that was where we were aiming. <laughs> so okay. seriously, so number one, I mean, it's it's simple stuff, but it's so darn, especially if you imagine we're on the range right now. So if you're on the range, please chuck a club down, point it, you know, at worst, point it at the at the flag. You, you understand it's kind of railway track, so in technically it should be a smidgen left. But, but for starters, if it's just pointing at the flag, then at least you get some feedback every day the same. Mm. This is so, because, you know, because without this, this game is so easy to stand on the range and you aim you know, a smidgen right, and this fella's so clever, so the first ball goes, oh, a bit too much to the right, and without thinking it, this goes, well, I'll correct that, I'm really smart. And sure enough, you go, and you go, oh, beautiful, look at that, on the, on the, on the pin. <laughs> so you do that for 30 minutes, and you come back tomorrow, and you're a little, you're a little left, because you, you, we're different every day. Eyes are different, body, isn't it? So you're a little left, and the first one goes left, and this is very clever, and, you, and after a while, you're hitting it on the flag, so you can see what you've done. So hands up who gets on the second tee and goes, <laughs> I don't believe it, I can't get, how do I get it off the range to onto the golf course? Agree? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So it's as simple as this. A number, I did this literally the whole of my life, my golfing life, so important, because I can do that every day. I can point a club every day, and then I stand, and I will at least be in the same direction every day, and I then go, oh, ball position's got to be here, and I've got to be swinging here, and you'll start to see your divots are heading in the right direction. All those, so that's kind of 101, isn't it? But it's so important because, you know, if you get ball position, feet alignment, then when you address it with a bit of luck, the body will start to make the right shapes. Yeah. The best in the world when I put my CBS cap on, and these guys are all doing this. Yeah. Grip, posture, alignment promise you that's all they're working and for the guys you know? at home this is really look golf is compensations for the amateur golfers they're making yeah. compensations all the time all the time correct. so yes yeah, so if you start bad and then you're, you're doing this and you see a few slices and also think you i mean generally the, the club golfer doesn't know how to make things you know and the hardest thing of our game is to do something very different feels like a massive exaggeration, Indeed. doesn't it? So Indeed. if you, so if you've been sure, if you've been poor posture, weights here, you're coming a bit over the top. So the club's always coming over here, and there's your weak slice. So when you say to them, "Oh, I want you, you know, can you get a bit of in to out?" Well, it has to feel like you're swinging like this, <laughs> in here, out there. So to actually get it, for, you know, if you're one of these people, to drop this, you learn to drop your butt get yourself in a better position here, and then the club can go that away, and it starts to move. But to you, it feels like this. Yeah. But we, under, you know, that's, it's, that's it, the thing about golf. And that's the good thing with putting some alignment aids like this down. You know, the exaggerations don't have to be so severe, which is obviously a good thing when you're trying to play golf still as well. This game's all about feedback. You know, it's what you're doing now will help you in 20 minutes going to the range, or it'll help you tomorrow. And you've got to have the feedback since you go, oh, I know what I was doing today. Yes. You know, if you're standing like this and swinging like that, you c yeah. you're like a wallflower. You can't come back the next day and shine, <laughs> you can't shine no the same in two days in a row, can no you? Chance. Seriously, learn to get good posture, good knees are so important, good hips. A secret tip is to drop your right pocket a little bit. That gets you a good angle. Um, you know, ball position, all that, you'll get a good you get your hands in the right place. You know, then taking it, then seriously, taking it up. You know, I watched Jack. Why did Jack Nicholas, the greatest ever, warm up like this every day? So look what he's doing. Look what he's doing to his feet. You know, the, 
the weight transference. Yeah. Look at the hip. Put this hip. Put this heel back down. Again. So this is Jack's warm up. As simple as that. So you know, you watch this and it takes you 20 years for it to click. <laughs> <laughs> but then I did. So I call that Jack's, and I would. And now I do Nick's because I was big into the shoulders as well. So am I firmly incorporating a bit of Jack's footwork and a bit of shoulder work? That's so important because then you've got so many people who struggle. They're, they're here. Well, look, my weight is. Mm -hmm on this side and I need to get the weight when I turn to this side. So simple things like that. You've got to get your weight transference, haven't you? So now we've incorporated good footwork, good knees, good hips, good shoulders. Put it back down and then through and face the target. That's the other thing for club golfers is they cannot release this right foot. No, yeah, absolutely. They go, their follow through and it's funny, I do my clinics and because I go like that, where's my belly pointing? Mm. Look, there's the ball, crunch the ball. in the trees. <laughs> you guys know, you agree. And then if, you, if you're the opposite, if you're weak and you're over the top, where's my belly pointing? There. So if it knows that much, your belly. Yeah. <laughs> point it there. Point it. So, you know, that's another. So for, again, for club golfers, think about, well, how do I get through? And, oh, how do I get my belly to point? And then that, this foot has got to release and the knees have got to almost kiss. You cannot do that one because they're not they haven't made it and you're shaking trying to hold it so let yourself go so that's really important so you can start with a really short backswing you know this is a great extra short backswing but face the target oh, there's a golf shot that's the best one i mean that's spot on isn't it right at it mm. you know that's one of the drills i did when i think about it moves well with ian Connolly when i first started he got me doing that and then he said well now hit it 20 yards further so Obviously the swing got a little longer, but it was the same in, you know, focus on the follow through. And sure enough, after a little while, after you've done half a dozen, you're suddenly making a full swing, nice and easy and through. Beautiful. You know, and, there, and there's your little goal shot. So taking that up another notch, you then um, understand that if you're on plane, it makes life a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah. So that's really important to practice. You know, what is, how does this right hand work to so, get the So just quickly on that, so you, for, for you there, you're looking club shaft. Yeah, look at the, the club. Somewhere, we used to say somewhere between, halfway in between. Yeah. Led and I worked on that one. So we used to put a ball, we used to put a ball about halfway between the right foot and the ball. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was pointing it. I'm tall, so obviously if you're a little short, you might, yeah, that might change. But anywhere between there and there is good. Obviously yeah. too much that, too much that is a no. Mm -hmm. So that's a great little simple drill. Well, where am I pointing the butt of the club? So that was another one of our drills. Like, where do you point it? There's your set, point the club there, bit of shoulder turn, release it. Nice. That was all right. Look at that's that. Good, that's... But if you want to make it easy, when you stand up and think, mm, how am I going to get through this? This is a dress, pretty good. Well, there is impact. Mm. Love that. Right? And now I've got a chance to get through. That's a, that is a great drill. Because you're then, just for starters, if you know, just learning to clear enough out the way. So all my Ian Connolly said, look, clear to, so your hands will get through. That's all you're trying to do. Then when you get better, or well, take it up, you'll then clear a certain way so you can spin the ball to the right. And then you'll then learn, oh wow, I've got this is impact to spin the ball the other way. So to take it up a notch, you'll learn that impact for it a fade. An impact for a draw are different, yes. have to be, because yeah, yeah, sure. the body's got to talk, twist slightly differently each time. So if you want to fade it, put your left hand on the club first, and then put your right, and then look, you can get out of your way. Look at that, that's, that's my fader impact, agree? Yeah. You can do sure. this on the counter at home. Left hand first, so look at that position. Now, right, remember that, shoulders and hips. Now I want to draw, watch this, just put the right hand first, and that, and then go, it's different, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's only a hair, yeah. I know, yeah, but yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's shoulders. And see, so this one, you have a chance to get underneath it. Well, this one, you've got to be on top of it. Mm. Yeah. And that's what I used to practice, fade draws. Is I know in the end of the 80s, once it kind of clicked, I was hitting fade, I'd hit every ball opposite. Fade, if you watch me from behind, they go, Faldo's useless today. <laughs> one's going right, one's going. <laughs> Seriously, but it was intentional, it was going this way. And when I got really good, they were just peeling, just falling out the sky, just like this. That was the idea, you're just doing this. So when you hit it against the wind, 
you bank it on the winds and people say, oh, it's it straight. But no, 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 you're always working it a smidgen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then later, then in, in the 90s, I then developed, you know, more of those follow throughs. And I gave them all names. I had the hold off, which was this when the right wrist got here. So I held the club face. That was my fade. Then I called it the bunt where I let it go. I let this right wrist go. Nice. So that gave it a bit of a twang. <laughs> then I had the chicken wing when I absolutely, you know, when it, when I had a pond or river down the left and there's no way it, you could, there was no way it was ever going to go left. You see, I hang on to it like that was yeah. my chicken. Wing. So the things always go in that way. And then I had a, what I call rotate, rotate, let this rotate. And that was my draw. So I could aim down the right hand side again, just go rotate, rotate. And there it is. You see that slings it back around the corner. So I messed around with those four shots all the time. <laughs> he's all right, isn't he? <laughs> he's, huh? like, he's okay. He's okay. He's not and now, now, a million years on, you know, I, people, when they play, they say, I don't want it to slice. So what do you see? A if slice. I say, I don't want it to slice <laughs> yeah. into the trees, what do you see? Yeah, yeah. You saw it slicing the trees. You, you can't stop it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So why don't you? And, it's, and I don't want to top it. Well, obviously things like that. But if you say I want to make it go to the right, mm. oh, that's different. To mm. I don't want to make it go into. The, so I love to play now when I look at a shot and go, like this one. You say, well, I want it right of the flag. Right, and I know with my practice. Here's another way I like to practice. Is I know if I hit it super low, just no thought other than hit it as low as possible. Right, look where it's going. Going to the right, Slight isn't it? cut on it, yeah. Two yards. Right, it's smidgen. Going about six feet away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then when the other one is, when I hit it as high as possible, just for fun, you know, just move it up a hair and think, right, sky it over the clouds. Where's it going? Yeah, a smidgen left. to the left. Yeah. And then suddenly, you know, light bulb. I went, hang on a minute. The high ones have all gone in the left rough and the, the low ones have all gone right. Go on the golf course, hole goes this way. We'll just hit it low. Yeah. I know my low one goes to the right. So when you get to a pin like this, I've got to go to the right. Well, if I know, I know why, if I hit it low, it's trying to go that way. So I love, I love to play that way. Stand on the tee and make it move rather than say, don't go left. Yeah. Make it go to the right. I think that's a, a cool difference. I, you know what I love about this as well. From Sir Nick there, he's saying he's going to the range with a goal, which is fantastic. Yeah. But you're going there and doing something different every time, and it's part of the goal. I think a lot of golfers will go there and go, right, I'm going to hit six signs, and I'm going to try and hit it dead straight. Well, and impossible. then when it doesn't, it carnage well, ensues. That's impossible. Yeah. That's impossible. I mean, I mean, straight, straight. Straight, I'll give you a yard either way. That's straight. Mm. That's impossible. Yeah. You can't guarantee. You can, you know, you can guarantee to make it move. And so that's, but again, when you said that, when you go to the range, if you put, simply put this thing down, then you'll get some feedback for tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. Think, think smart that if I'm going to spend time now, I want this to work tomorrow, not just last me five minutes when I walk off the range. What, what, I felt all right, but what was it? And, and I think the great yeah. thing about this, we always talk about you move towards what you focus on. And I think, you know, and Carl Morris always says that let the shot create the swing. And it's, it's obvious, Nick, that you have a clear intention 100 percent. that's the that's the great word intention. intention so when you stand back you go what do i want yeah it's as simple as that i was talking last week so for me it was like well what do i want and then now i'm in the one trick you've done now you're in present time because mm -hmm. you're right here looking at going, what do i want i'm not going to oh, i've screwed up the ninth <laughs> took an eight whatever and i hate the 17th oh mm -hmm. you're right you're now and you go okay so what do i want so i love to hit oh i need to mm. i could you know your feelings. Oh, I could draw this one in to that flag. And then you have to see from the flag, you have to be a big curve come back to you. So there's the curve of the flight. So you've got to match, obviously, the swing to the curve, haven't you? You can't stand up and go, oh, there's my curve. And that's my <laughs> practice swing. Agreed? Yeah, agreed. So if you're going to make a practice swing, I say make it, I call it race speed. Do it at race speed and think, okay, here I am. There's. Oh, there's my practice thing. Why not? So then, and then once you've done that, that's then you've got to believe it and commit to it. You stand up, you line it, and you've you've just felt it, and you have to then just go for it one more time. Haven't you? I was going to ask you to play that shot because you'd pictured it so well. There you go. It was a and there's your, smidge, there's your little draw towards the flag. There was a smidgen of a draw. I hope you've been uh, taking some notes, guys. There's some golden nuggets there from <laughs> Nick Faldo. Amazing to watch that. You know. 
um, amazing display there. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. Massive thank you to the Wentworth Club here. And also, don't forget to check out our five shots lower. Thank you very much, Simi. Okay, can I ask you guys one question? Yes, yes you can. Have you got onesies in the same Yeah, we, we of course have. we have. We have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, All guys. Right. See you Cheers. soon. Thank you.